everyone, Nikia Fabe here. Welcome to my outdoor kitchen. And today, something amazing is cooking. So, I want to prepare lunch, and I'll be using two, two modes of cooking. I'll be using uh, the charcoal jiko, and also, I'll be using my outside. You know, <laughs> guys, it's been raining, and my, my firewood is wet. So, I hope it won't be like a challenge. That's why I have an option. So if this one gives me headache, I have an option. But I'll be cooking with both of them. So I want to light the fire and prepare the ingredients. So stay stay and you know enjoy the process. So I've lightened the jika and I've ever showed you guys how to do it. So the next thing I want to do as I wait for the deco to move. What do you call it? Okay, as I wait for the fire to be ready, I'll also light with the, the three legged. <laughs> Today is my lucky day. We have the fire ready. So let me get some water and then I start cooking. So guys, this is what I'll be making today. Yes! So I want to show you how I make a very very healthy beef, you know, for my family. So this one, you can you can have it, the two of you. Um, so this is for two people. <laughs> Do you think it's going to be okay? Is it going to be enough? And what I'll be cooking with is these ones. So this is the secret ingredient, by the way. Guys, if you've not tried this, particular onion you're missing out on a lot because right now it's my favorite and then some tomatoes this is what i'll boil the beef with so i should be preparing it by the way and then coriander to garnish so let's prepare the ginger and this because i'll be boiling it with this to soften it and to give it that very nice very nice smell I want to wash the meat. It's always good to, to wash your meat because you know you don't know maybe because of someone maybe use some some dirty hands to handle the meat and then I want to boil it so maybe this one this water is enough. Uh, you know, this for there is a nonstick, so I'll be using this. I don't want it to be exposed to direct, direct what? The suit. I'm looking for something to. Oops. And then I'll place this one here. Oh, like this. So, I'll cut a little ginger and a piece of garlic. Okay, so, this is what I'll be using to boil my beef. Very, very small pieces so this is what will be and then also the ginger and cut it into very very small pieces 
like this. You can put as much as you want, but for me, that is enough. Yes, and then you leave it to boil. As we wait for, for, for the beef to boil, I want to prepare the ingredients over here. So I just want to clean them and also cut them. Chop the ones that I'm supposed to chop. And also, what? So for this one, I'll have to. Guys, tell me what do you use to make the beef? For me, this is it. Is, this is all. This is it. So we have ginger. We will have garlic. Very natural and healthy. Like this one. And then we we'll have tomatoes. So this is what I was saying. This, these are spring onions, eh? and just go and try, and then tell me on the comment section what was your experience with with these onions. I know most of us um, we use it to make what do you call it? Mokimo. Mokimo is um, is an African meal, especially in the central region of Kenya. But for me, I'm loving it. I've been using it for a while and the food has been amazing. So I decided today I'll make my beef with this one. Then I'll tell you guys my experience. Of course it's going to be amazing. So I'll have to rewash it once again because the water is still there. Oh my god, guys, I know there, there is, but my meat is boiling, it's almost ready, and the smell is wanting, the smell is inviting me to eat, and the water is ready, it's almost ready also, so guys, at this point, my beef by the way is very ready, so I want to just slice these tomatoes and as you know my tomatoes i always make it in this shape because they cook really fast and very well they form a very nice paste yeah there you go. so this i know i boiled uh, the meat with ginger but still i still want to feel the flavor of ginger so i'll just cut Cut it into very small pieces. That is okay. And then I'll cut the garlic. So you can, when you have a mortar and a pesto, you can decide to crush it. But here in the village, but I'll be, I'll be using. Um, I've seen somewhere people using stones using stones to crush so you just tie it with something and then you crush but today I won't do that yeah so and then this is the onion I was talking about so I'll just cut it into pieces So at this point my beef is okay so I can just um because I want to make a wet fry um I'll just transfer it into this small bowl because it's it's small yes 
I still use this sufuria and I won't wash it because it's not dirty. So. Then I'll add in some oil. So you might want to add just a little. That's enough for a baby. It's still very little and you, and you still want it to. Okay, for those who have cholesterol problems, I would advise you to use um, butter, the natural butter. Yeah. Yeah, to avoid a lot of issues. For me, I'm okay with the oil. So I'll just add in the um, onion. I'll add in the onion. The smell is amazing. Oh my goodness, because of the ginger. <laughs> so we wait for the onions. And then the good thing with these onions, you don't have like to cook them until golden brown. You can just stir them maybe two times and then you can add the rest of the ingredients. At this point, I'm going to add the tomatoes. Okay. And the tomatoes. And you know what else I'll add at this point? I'll add some salt. I'll add some salt because I want, I want it to cook properly. And I'm not boiling the meat anymore. If you want to make it even faster. Then I cover it. You wait for the tomatoes to be ready. So guys, at this point, the tomatoes are ready. So I'm gonna crush them before I add my meat. So remember, we added our ingredients all together. Okay, not all together, but the tomatoes, the ginger, and the um garlic. So you see what I was saying, like it forms a very nice paste when you cut the tomatoes into the loud shapes that you can blend. I don't have a blender. So there you go. Now this is the point where I add my meat. So I add my meat. And this broth is still what I'll use for the soup for the for the little kasuk that I want. <laughs> the tomatoes are too much. <laughs> but we want a wet fry, so you need to like put the tomatoes, like a lot of tomatoes. Eh? You know, you, you, you don't even need um, the soup. But maybe you can just add a little. Maybe it will boil for some time. Look at that. Very natural, very healthy. <laughs> Very traditional. I meant to say traditional, not natural. So, oh my goodness! Ah! Oh my god! Hey! The taste! The taste is amazing. So, I'm going to cover this. Oh, there is still one inside. I'll just cover it. Wait for it to be ready. Guys, see that? 
Oh my goodness. Looks really nice. The results. What do you think? So we have the, the, the green stuff. It's the, the garlic. So finally we've garnished. So there is it. <laughs> so at this point I want to fry some cabbage to balance the diet, you know. So that is what I'm doing. I want to cook ugali, Kenyan ugali, white ugali from here. So that's why I was saying I needed two. I needed two. Something like that. Make our ugali to go with the beef. Oh, I can't wait. I mean, this is a sign that I'm, I'm almost eating. Eh? I am almost eating. Where is that muiko? This is what we call muiko in our language. It's used to make ugali. Let me still add some. So that it can boil. Is it boiling or kutokota? You know, when cooking ugali, you have to make sure that the fire is checked. Huh? Because you might cook something that you will not even eat. And of course, this is something that you need when you're using firewood because your hair will be smelling like something else. So I have to keep on, you know, um, blowing the fire because my firewood is okay but you know what guys we have an out of out, how another outdoor kitchen over there i don't know when they are going to fix it maybe they saw me cooking out outside and they are like ah, let's fix something for this lady <laughs> she's suffering but still okay you know i can manage anything If you really want to know how to make ugali, yes, this type of ugali, just uh, visit in one of my videos. I'll actually cut it, or in the end, eh, you will see a suggestion whereby you can go and watch it how to make ugali. Yes, ugali is ready to serve. There it is. This is how we do it. I'll just freeze it here. might want to cover it eh? so that it doesn't get cold if you're not ready to serve it yet so this is the cabin that i'm frying and because the tomatoes are not yet ready i'll just you know put, it, put some salt um and then leave it so that we cover it Add some salt. Give it a lot. 
And since I don't have the cover for this, I'll use this one. It's bigger, but it will work. And then you wait for it to just steam. Then start. So guys, so we were just steaming it. It's time to turn it over. <laughs> turn over. Looks colorful. <laughs> this is ready. It's ready, so let's go and serve our meal and enjoy. Guys, the end product that is it. You see, very nice. So, let me enjoy my meal and I'll see you in the next video.